In this video, I'm going to give you my real world review of the Irix 150mm f2.8 macro lens. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood, and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to give you my real world review of the Irix 150mm f2.8 Dragonfly macro lens. The Irish lens has a one-to-one -one magnification reproduction on a 35mm full frame sensor. Now I've had this for several months and as anyone who is a regular viewer to the channel knows, I use this equipment before I put out my review. So let's talk first of all about the box, how it came. It's come very well presentable in this box, beautiful little box. And also you get two end caps and then in that box you also get this hard case for your lens, which I found very useful. Because it's not my lens, I needed to look after it, so it was constantly put back into this case. Whether I'd use that if I brought the lens, I don't know, but it's a lot better than the Canon ones that you get. Now, most of my testing was done on the Canon 80D. As you know, I've just gotten purchase of the EOS R, and I have done a little bit of testing on there, and it's very impressive on the EOS R. But the other bulk of the testing was done on a Canon 5D Mark for. So if you're looking for a technical review of this lens, you'll have to look elsewhere because I'm going to review this from a real world perspective of a macro photographer. So right off the bat, my experience with this lens is absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love this lens. As you can tell from all the videos I have done, I think it's a fantastic lens. So again, if you're coming for technical specs, look elsewhere because I'm not really bothered about minimum distortion in my images because it can all be fixed. So first of all, build quality. So the lens is an almost all metal construction. The lens hood is plastic, but the actual construction of the lens is mostly metal with a little bit of plastic parts. It's got weather sealing on the end here with five more weather seals throughout the barrel. It weighs in 140 grams, which is 1.8 pounds. We have a 77 millimeter thread on the front of the lens. So any filters you want to pop on there, it's a 770 millimeter thread for that. Now for anyone who's using the Yong Nuo Trim Macro Flash, all you got to do is use step down rings. And because the actual lens is smaller than the thread, you don't get no vignette when you're using a step down ring and attaching your Trim Macro Flash to this lens. You can get this lens in a Canon mount, Nikon mount or a Pentax mount. Sorry, there is no uh, Sony mount for this lens yet. But I'm sure at some point they will start developing Sony mounts because they'd be fools not to. Out of the box, it comes with a lens collar. There's not many macro lenses at this focal length and at this price that comes with a tripod collar. However, with this collar, I found that for my setup, it didn't really work because I couldn't attach the, uh, the lens to my tripod because I'm using a Manfrotto quick release plate if I had my battery pack on my camera. Without the battery pack, no problem. This all comes down to your style of shooting. If you prefer to go light, and without a, uh, a battery pack on your camera, it'll work brilliant. But for me, I like to have that battery pack on there. For added ergonomics, that I just prefer the uh, battery pack. And also when I go into a portrait mode, I have all my buttons there as well. So I didn't really use the, uh, the tripod collar with this lens. And I found that I really didn't have to use it because I just removed it and went like that running and gunning. Now, as with all my reviews, I have checked out other people's reviews and they're going on about, you've got to have this tripod collar because you have to have it on a tripod. No, you don't. I've used this handheld, no problems at all. You've seen me using it on Macro Adventures Episode 5, and you can easily use this freehand. So let's talk about your working distance. The minimum focus distance on this, according to the technical specs, is 34 centimeters. That is something I never pay attention to on websites or lens marketing campaigns, okay? Because that is the distance from your focusing point to the sensor on your camera. If it's here, your sensor is just here okay that is the distance and that's not working distance so practical working distance on this lens which is from the end of the lens the minimum focus distance is 18 centimeters that is a great distance if you have the lens hood on that reduces down to 12 centimeters so it's a great working distance for this lens i absolutely love it as you can tell on my tests on a crop sensor it's very sharp at 2.8 and the sharpness improves up to f4 very similar to what you see in the canon lens however unlike the canon lens the sharpness remains up to around f16 now it's a personal choice as to where the diffraction starts to come in i see it's around f14 
but it's nothing to worry about and I have taken this lens up to f18 on an APS-C sensor and I've been able to get good sharp images and that's great. When it comes to vignetting because you're on a crop sensor there's minimum vignetting there's just a little bit but nothing to worry about and nothing you can't remove in Lightroom. And there is minimum distortion from what I could tell. If you're putting it up against a test chart, you might see a little bit of bowing and distortion. But in a real world situation where you're photographing a bug that, let's face it, half the time you can't tell if it's up, down, left or right when you're photographing these little insects, you're not going to notice any issue with distortion. On a full frame sensor, it's a similar story except you can push it up to at least f20 before you have to really worry about softening from diffraction. So you do get diffraction going up from around f14 but nothing you can't fix again in post processing. The lens is sharp from corner to corner and on both APS-C and full frame cameras it's as most sharpest I believe at around f8. f8 is a very nice f-stop setting for this lens. So on a full frame camera you're getting mild vignetting at f2.8 and stop down to f6.3 to remove that vignetting. Again, it's nothing you can't fix in Lightroom. And there is minimum aberration that I can see from my testing of this lens. Again, it's real world testing, photographing insects, not a brick wall. So you get a little bit of flaring when you shoot into the sun, but there's not many situations you're going to find yourself photographing into the sun unless you're trying to perform something like this image here of my praying mantis that's shot against the sun. But unless you're photographing like that, I shouldn't worry about the flaring from this lens. The bokeh on this lens looks a lot nicer than the Canon lens because it has 11 aperture blades so your bokeh is a lot more pleasing than the Canon lens. Let's get on to the thing that I really like about this lens and that is the focus ring. The lens has 270 degrees of rotation. That means you can get really precise focusing when you're doing both stills and video. And the other thing I like is you also have a lock ring. So once you get your focusing set to where you want it, you can lock it off you don't accidentally knock it. You can also turn this just a little bit to give the focus ring some friction. Now I mostly used it fully open because then when it's on the camera I'm able to just turn it very slightly with my thumb or finger to get precise focusing. Also you have a pebbled rubberoid surface on the focus ring which really helps with the grip. So I've had no problems with the rubber on the focusing point. I've heard reports of it coming loose, but so far on my lens that I've been sent, I haven't had an issue. But again, I've only had it a few months, so that might be something that might develop over time. I can't advise you on that one because I haven't had it long enough. In video, there is some focus breathing with this lens, but nothing to really worry about. And for video, I really like this lens for video, mainly because I've been able to get the precise focusing using this massive focus ring. If we look at the Canon lens, I'm going to put it to infinity on the focusing right there, okay? This is how much I can turn it before we hit one-to-one -one magnification. That's it, okay? Whereas with the Irix lens, let's put this to infinity, okay? Turn it around so you can see it. Now we get to go all the way around to there. So you get much more precise on your focusing, you're not going past too many times, okay? And that is really great, particularly for video because you're having to track a subject and you have to pull that focus. So it's really great that uh, focusing ring. That's probably my favorite part of this lens, that and the sharpness. For portraits, I found this lens very difficult to use when coupled with the 80D because it being a manual lens. Now I'm pretty much used to autofocus. You can shout at me in the comments if you want to, that, real photographers use manual lenses but when I put this on my ESR with focus peaking I was nailing focus every single time and the images from this on a portrait look beautiful so again similar to the Canon lens you can go from macro to portrait without having to swap lenses which is another plus point so although it is a manual focusing lens you do have a aperture control within the, uh, within the lens so that you do control the aperture via the camera. What did surprise me about this lens is putting it up against the Canon lens. Now I'll put it up against the 100mm macro lens because of the price point. These are very similarly priced. This is around 600, this is around 800 and of course I don't have the Canon 180mm lens. However, this is a sharper lens than this. However, it does have some down points. 
One is the white, it's a little bit whitier, a little bit girthier than the Canon lens. It's also a manual focus lens, which take from that whatever you want to. That doesn't bother me as a macro photographer, but some people do like to use autofocus. And the big downer is it has no image stabilization. Now, if this lens is compatible with your body and your body has in-body stabilization, then you're laughing. If not, then you have to think to yourself that you've got to have a higher shutter speed to compensate for that. The downsides to this, apart from the color not really working with my setup, but that's limited to my setup. It might not necessarily be the same thing with you, but I do have to point out these things in these reviews. Uh, one of the big major things I found with this lens is if you keep it attached to your camera, it will drain the camera battery. And what I'm finding is I'm losing about a quarter of a battery per 12 to 24 hours if I keep it on here. Now that's easily fixed by either taking your batteries out or taking the lens off. But sometimes I like to keep my camera assembled just in case something turns up that needs to be photographed. And as you know, any macro photographer will tell you, sometimes you have to act quick. So I do prefer to have my preferred setup already. That is the lens, the battery grip on, the camera's usually set to a profile that is for macro photography. That way I can just pull it out my bag and take a picture. Now it's not a massive big deal because let's face it, You'd have to have it in your camera bag for like a week, maybe two, before your batteries go flat. And most of the time, my batteries are getting charged but anyway. But that is an issue with the lens. So in conclusion, which one do you buy out of these two lenses? If you're in the group of uh, traveling lighter, you want autofocus, and you want that image stabilization, definitely go for the Canon. If you shoot your macros in manual focus, and you're not bothered about image stabilization, I would definitely go for the IRX. As for me, I find myself liking image stabilization. I also like my autofocus, so I have been switching between the two. If IRX ever comes out with a version with autofocus and image stabilization, this would be the lens to go for. As you know, I've got an EOS R, which is a much better low light camera than my 80D. And I've been finding myself reaching for the IRIX lens every single time I have a project. Even with shooting the kids, because it's got focus peaking, I don't need autofocus. Because the ISO is so great on that camera, I don't need the image stabilization from the Canon lens. So I have been finding myself going for the IRIX lens every time, and I don't want to send it back. Maybe it'll get lost on the post on the way back, eh? Again, if you want to get in deep with the technical specs, head over to their website. There's a link in the description below. There's lots of technical specs there for you, including the dimensions. So do check the dimensions and the way to say if it is appropriate for your setup. That's it from this video. Again, the IRIX 150mm macro lens is a very, very nice lens, particularly in its price point of around $600. It's very competitively priced against the Canon. It's sharper than the Canon. And again, so long as you're willing to lose autofocus and image stabilization, this is the lens to go for. So it's time for me to box this lens up and send it back to IRIX, which is very unfortunate because again, it's a very nice lens. I want to thank you for watching. My name's Stuart Wood, and again, I'll see you on the next video. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood, and welcome. What is this in front of my eye? Hello, my name's. So build quality, this thing is an all metal. Oh, no. So this thing serves two purposes. One, it's a great lens for macro. And if you get some little bag who's after his next fix, you can lob this on his head and get rid of him. Ah, let's cut that one. <laughs> and your body has in count. So at the box, it comes with a lens collar. There's not many macro. At the box, it comes with a... And again, so long as you're not really, so long as you, I keep putting Irix off because I don't want to send it back. But now I've done the review, I've got to send it back. That kind of sucks. I think my Canon lens is going to be a lot happier because it's going to get used more now. That's it. Still here? Go on, get out of here. I'll see you next week.